Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for us in gold fundamental and technical analysis. Um, a warm welcome to everybody if you're new or if you're a returning uh, watcher and please don't forget to like, subscribe and share uh, with your colleagues and fellow trading uh, buddies if uh, you like the content and think the uh, content I provide every week is uh, of use. So let's get straight into really the um, <coughs> what's going on going on in the calendar in the week ahead and we'll get into more in-depth fundamental analysis and just a reminder I guess for those of you who are new to uh, the channel um, we use a com combination of fundamental analysis and technical analysis but we're really kind of driven by fundamental analysis in terms of understanding uh, currency exchange rate value and um, understanding really where prices are likely to go in the medium to long term. Short term prices are typically driven by uh, liquidity and the hunt for liquidity. But if you can really kind of zoom out and understand what makes a currency appreciate or depreciate and devalue um, and play really the best kind of uh, the pairs as far as uh, choose the pairs where one currency is uh, appreciating versus a currency that is likely to devalue then that's where you get the uh, the trends and those trends can last for actually quite a while and we'll see you know one for example one um uh, uh currencies like for example the dollar anyways um getting into the week ahead and uh zooming in a bit <clears throat> so you can go to trading economics in the week ahead and i'll uh post a link in the uh the um the uh, chat uh on YouTube so week ahead uh, next week investors focus will turn to corporate results uh, on the macro front which is what we're on a, um, focusing on is the US inflation rate China and UK GDP growth figures um, and monetary policy decisions in Canada and New Zealand will offer traders fresh updates on the strength of the global economic recovery. So um, right now there is um, concerns of the um, um, global risk sentiment and concerns of a global slowdown really. Um, <clears throat> but e even though we are in probably more of a risk off environment where there is a lot of fear um, from things like inflation and economic slowdown, um, really our job as traders is to try and pick the winners out of you know the um, the, uh, uh, the currencies. So who's the dog with the least fleas is what um, you know I, I commonly refer to uh, the phrase I commonly refer to. So who's the best currency out of all of the uh, currencies that we do trade, and that's the one you want to buy. And who's the worst is the one you want to sell, right? That's pretty much how it goes. Anyways, let's get into. Um, some of the technicals with some more fundamentals uh, on top and looking at the dollar index and DXY is just a measure of dollar strength against um, various currencies like the euro, the yen uh, and the pound. So um, using the dollar index as I guess a bit of confluence, you can pretty much see what's been happening with the dollar. Just it goes from strength to strength. Um, I was actually hoping last week that prices would actually you know, come down a bit really um, into this demand zone and use it as confluence to get a better price to buy the dollar. Um, but um, it, it looks like uh, the dollar being um, not necessarily uh, strong, but just basically, as I said before, the best of the worst, right? Um, and my bias on the dollar to, you know, to, to buy the dollar of, um, you know, it's pretty much been for the whole year. I've been saying, you know, my bias has literally just been buy the dollar, buy the dollar. You can go back through all the weekly videos for anyone who's, you know, who doesn't believe me on that. Never changed my uh, bias. I've always said buy the dollar this year. I've not once said sell the dollar. And um, yeah, uh, pretty much uh, this is, you know, where the, where the trend is. And it's not hard to, you know, forecast. It's just understanding, you know, that dollar was pretty much the, 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 the better currency. Now, does that mean that, you know, every single trade works out? Of course not, because there are pullbacks, right? But um, overall, when you look at the path of least resistance, this is what's, you know, been happening. Now, um, the dollar, right, um, recently had um, jobs data and so uh, not giving up. So the jobs data shows just how tight the, U the US labor market really is and the broader measure of unemployment set a record low in June, All right? So that's typically good, right? But it's it's got some knock-on effects. 
right? But I'll get into that in a sec. So um, nearly 400,000 jobs added in a month and um, an unemployment rate of nearly a 50 year low is probably enough evidence of the extreme tightness in the US labor market. But a look beneath the surface of the June um, employment report and other recent data shows just how hot it really is. And a more inclusive measure, da, 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 yeah, it basically talks about, um, you know, the, um, uh, uh, the, the details into the uh, unemployment and employment. But the, the, the view that really you should take is that, and the view that I uh, tell the traders in my uh, private trading group is that, um, in fact, the Federal Reserve um, actually need unemployment to rise. Yeah. And it's because unemployment, um, the lower unemployment goes is the higher um, wage growth goes, which adds to inflation. And um, the Fed have a 2% target. Most central banks have a 2 to 3% target, inflation target, and they want inflation to come down. So they need, in fact, unemployment to rise in order to get inflation down. Yeah. So um, this is really the link. It's not necessarily to understand the necessary to understand the, you know, the, the, the specifics of this, and I'm not going to get into the specifics, but just understand this, that in times of low unemployment, the demand for labor by employers exceeds the supply. In such a tight labor market, employers typically need to pay higher wages to attract employees, ultimately leading to rising uh, wage inflation right so although the numbers might seem good right and you're going to read that the fed are definitely looking to probably hike say definitely but they're likely to hike by 75 basis points 0.75 percent the reason why they have to is because of the fact that um uh, it's uh, um, low unemployment is contributing to continued high inflation so it's not fantastic. Yes, it's decent for, you know, potential trades, but then there's knock on effects of the economy and, 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 and the like, which I'm not really going to get into this. And this is for just really kind of private members analysis. But on the surface, the, the numbers look great. The dollar for me is still going to be a buy. Um, and any pullbacks really um, to the you know monthly fair value or below are really you know and, and some demand zones within below those areas and or at those areas are really the areas that I'm going to be looking for still continued buys so from a demand zone perspective the nearest demand zone is going to be there and um, and so around that 105 yeah round number to 104.64s is going to be the <coughs> the first kind of confluence area to potentially look for if price does that this week next week the week after who knows but <clears throat> this is really where uh, for now i want to be a potential buy or i have some buying confluence uh for the dollar when i am buying the um you know the, the dollar yen for example or or any of the other dollar crosses so that's my bias from a sell trade perspective um you're really gonna have to wait for if you are looking to sell the dollar then look for you know uh, proven supply proof of value that's that the dollar is expensive up here but until prices do pull back um pretty much there's no supply zones um technically so moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen <clears throat> again this week we did have uh, prices, uh, you know, move kind of grind to the upside, and we are in an expensive area. Yes, price did kind of hit this demand zone and kind of down to the uh, the monthly one of the monthly moving fair values um, uh, uh, zone. But um, but for me, I think I'd rather wait for a bit of a deeper pullback um, and even an even bigger pullback if possible. If we can get this now again there is um, the 140 area which is being um, uh, kind of touted as the the zone where if if for example uh, the the well, the Bank of Japan may start to intervene at the 140 areas if prices drift all the way up there and if they do intervene then there could be um, you know a, a quite a large uh, drop in price but for now until you know prices reach the 140 or anywhere around there or if the Bank of Japan come out and do a surprise um, you know uh, in bank intervention uh, for me again the path of least resistance is to the upside so um, any pullbacks to beyond the uh, monthly moving fair value or at there 
think probably beyond that would be a decent buying opportunity for the uh, dollar yen uh, dollar cad again dollar cad i'm sorry dollar swiss apologies dollar swiss um dollar moving from strength to strength price has pretty much bounced off of that uh, demand zone a couple of weeks ago um uh, this isn't really a pair that I am interested in, to be fair. The the, um, the Swiss franc are, um, and the Swiss National Bank are looking to um, high crates as well as the dollar. So um, you're probably likely to have prices enter into what is known as an auction. Um, traders would typically know that as a range, but uh, it's known as a as an, as an auction and um, fair value auction between the one o. Uh, 1006 and 95 it's quite a wide um, uh, auction which is basically about 500 pips but the point being is that for me um, when you've got two pairs uh, currencies that are uh, looking to uh, where their central banks looking to high crates it's not really a currency um, that I'm looking to um, uh, to trade and to be fair all central banks are actually hiking rates but there are um, a bit of nuances uh, with regards to, um, I guess the, uh, the 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 economies, because the economies would be the difference, right? Who's going into a recession first? Who's going into a recession potentially later and last, or who's likely to avoid a recession? So, for me, it's a bit. Um, I would say probably out of the two, the dollar should be the the stronger one, to be fair. Um, but I just prefer other you know pairs than to trade the uh, dollar Swiss. I think that supply zone has been taken out. The uh, demand zone now kind of starts from there so any pullbacks if you're looking at buying the um, the dollar really looking for a bigger pullback into that zone there if you're looking for a sell trade I would say probably the highs or just above that level would be decent for a uh, for a sell trade um, moving on to the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD again um, two central banks hiking rates the Bank of Canada have come out recently and said that they are um, actually, they didn't say it, but there's been announcements or, or predictions, I guess, that um, from um, from from traders and analysts and economists that the Bank of Canada are likely to hike by uh, 75 basis points. So that again, two uh, currencies that are quite uh, strong, probably two of the best currencies. Um, probably looking at maybe some more downside potential but ultimately if, if risk remains off then the dollar should be the one uh, to really um, uh, benefit from any kind of risk off sentiment and continued uh, risk off sentiment so for example when he fears about global growth um, is going to be really uh, the dollar is going to be the one or should be the one to actually strengthen so if you're looking to buy then any anywhere I think you know beyond again or within this uh, demand zone to look to buy the dollar if you're looking to sell the uh, the dollar and buy the Canadian dollar then really this was your chance um, up at these uh, these uh, uh, supply zone highs um, moving on to the New Zealand dollar US dollar and again I was saying last week that um, part of least resistance is probably to the downside and we've pretty much seen what's what's happened there was a decent demand zone here but again when in a risk kind of in a risk off environment you're gonna you know the winner should be the the us dollar um again i'll delete this and i think any pullbacks into the supply zones are okay but again they're below at the moment the um the monthly fair value so i don't like to take any kind of trades below the monthly fair value every you know price has to be either there or above it um and into any of those supply zones so um again it's, it's not really a pair that i'm looking to, to take either again the uh, the uh, rbnz reserve bank of new zealand are looking to high crates as well so um not really a pair that i'm interested in but if i was i'd be short in the uh uh, the New Zealand dollar against the US dollar I think um, in a risk off environment so if prices do come up to that zone there and then you get the moving fair value monthly moving fair value come back into that zone as well then that's some decent uh, potential confluence or anything higher than there um, from a buy trade perspective I'd have to see some proof of value for prices to really kind of you know uh, prove that there's demand there and then wait for a pullback before looking at getting long into what would be you know a demand zone probably right around here uh, in that price range between the 0 0.616 and the 0 0.612 um, moving on to the pound dollar and the pound dollar I am interested in 
definitely interested in this, trying to get short on this. Um, so I'm going to, shall I keep it there? I will, I'll, I'll drag this down a bit because there is a supply zone um, right here. So I do want to highlight that that is a zone that I'm uh, probably going to be looking at. Right, if prices can come up into this zone, but also at least touch this uh, the monthly uh, moving fair value, so that's going to be probably around the one two one seven areas. Um, now, why am I um, bearish on the pound? And again, I've been bearish on the pound, you know, from around April times. You can pretty much see what's been happening. Um, but the pound, uh, let's go back to sorry, where was I? I think I've put them in the wrong place, but um, the UK, right? So the UK uh, political chaos sees early election creep into traders' radar. So NatWest expects faster Bank of England hikes on prospect of fiscal easing. Early vote could see investors uh, assess Scottish uh, succession risks. So the nonchalant uh, nonchalance of, of UK markets to the overthrow of the Prime Minister Boris Johnson could change in a flash. So um, if you're you know if you're not up on UK politics, pretty much our Prime Minister, the UK Prime Minister, um, uh, had to resign. He's messed up you know one too many times. But uh, how does that affect us as traders? So here's a quote from I think it's uh, Nat West who says the prospect of the election itself would be unambiguously negative for the currency as a, as wider political risks escalate said NatWest analyst including sorry including Imogen uh, Basra um, an earlier election and therefore larger than previously expected physical fiscal easing increases the risk of the Bank of England acting more forcefully in the second half of 2023 and longer dated gilt yields rising so um, overall I think it's still negative there's a lot of uncertainty around uh, the pound and again I'm not saying that you know looking at the pound that you know prices are going to um, uh, you know, go to you know the the downside and continue going to the downside. Um, nobody knows in the short term what it's going to do, but um, if all we can do is look for prices to pull back, and as long as the pound has got you know problems, that's a decent price to look for any kind of short trades, or it might even be you know further up here. But as long as the dollar continues to you know outperform and stay the better currency for me, uh, the path of least resistance still remains to the downside. Also, as well, adding to that. You've got Nomura uh, trading desk sees lack of buyers for the pound. So sentiment is clearly hugely against the pound, says Foster. Uh, says Foster. Uh, sterling has tumbled 11% this year amid broad dollar strength as well. So Nomura PLC's currency trading desk isn't seeing major buyers for the pound in the wake of Prime Minister Boris Johnson's resignation. Sterling is moving on pure momentum against technical levels, said Anthony Foster, the firm's head of FX spot trading. We have seen no pound buyers of any notes. You know, why would you really? I mean, there's going to be obviously pound buyers and there might even be, like I said, a bit of a liquidity uh, hunt in the short term because there are a lot of... Um, the, the liquidity is really to the upside as far as you know is located above the market because there's pretty lots of short traders and day traders are going to go short so all their stop losses are residing above so don't i wouldn't be surprised if prices pull back you know stop out a lot of traders but ultimately um if you trade the way that we do as far as just being patient and looking for the best prices, bargain prices, potential cheap prices, um, then these types of areas are where you probably want to look for, you know, buying opportunities. Again, not financial advice, of course, I'm just telling you what I'm doing. So for me, that's really where we are. Um, buying a pound is not really something I'm looking to do. Um, so yeah, moving on to the euro dollar and the euro dollar, again, similar to the, uh, to the uh, British pound um, in terms of uh, devaluation against the, uh, the dollar and um, again we've been saying pretty much week in week out uh, you know for shorts on the uh, on the euro dollar and uh, it, it continues right so the euro have got a lot of problems a hell of a lot of problems and um, the French minister says Russian gas cut off most likely scenario so nation trying its best to avoid power shortages 
Le Marie says uh, uh, finance minister to update EDF nationalization in weeks. So French um, um, finance minister Bruno Le, uh, Le Marie uh, said Europe must prepare for Russian gas deliveries to be shut off entirely in retaliation for the region's sanctions on the Kremlin and support for Ukraine. And um, again, over the last week or two, I've been saying this exact same thing. These are the stories that I have been uh, put out. I put it out on the 30th of June um, in, in probably that week's um, uh, 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 weekly analysis if you go back to to that week as well as JP Morgan basically saying that you know uh, they see stratospheric $380 oil on worst case Russian cut right so um, from that perspective you know we're just getting more and more evidence of you know uh, a potential weaker uh, euro so the market is pricing it in of course the market is ahead of uh, you know the average retail trader and so it's probably what it's expecting is probably you know that to maybe happen if it does it has to price it in so um, this is the reason why you're seeing you know this happen now prices could obviously rally um, and do something different if the Russians don't you know shut off uh, gas supplies and that probably may see the euro start to rally um, a bit more actually say a bit more but maybe maybe a lot right but either way um, the euro have got still issues beyond just the uh, the gas problems um, that you know is um, and their uh, their their issues with Russia so let's see what happens there but anyways the, the nearest really kind of supply zone is going to be up at the 104s um, and look for any kind of short trades around there um, that's, that's really where we're, where I'm looking for anyway uh, to continue to short the euro dollar um, moving on to the Australian dollar US dollar and um, Australia again similar to the New Zealand dollar and even the Canadian dollar to a certain extent um, uh, in, a, in a risk off environment you know the dollar is going to be uh, the winner commodity currencies tend not to do so well in a risk off environment um, any pullbacks I think above that zone there I think the, the uh, 70 cent to 70.05 uh, is probably the better level to look for any kind of short trades if we're looking to short this as far as demand is concerned if I zoom out the nearest demand zone was way back in 2020 so I'm not looking to um, I'd rather wait for proof of value uh, for you know uh, to look for any kind of demand but I guess that you could put demand there but it's not really a strong area of demand but just uh, if you are interested in that that's okay I guess for uh, for you to try to look for any kind of uh, long trade but personally it's not really like I said proven uh, demand but that's where we are with the uh, Aussie dollar the Australian dollar I think is going to definitely be a really good buy and probably one of the best buyers against the US dollar if risk sentiment turns back on so um, yeah just just keep an eye on that one um, Aussie yen and the Aussie yen again this uh, demand zone managed to hold uh, you know uh, long trades around here um, from last week I was saying you know my bias is to the long side and hopefully you could still probably see something like that uh, occur so I'm going to drag this down again not necessarily the strongest demand at the moment but let's see if uh, um, the Australian dollar does uh, look to uh, strengthen and appreciate uh, you know they did um, they are looking to continue to hike rates and I think from there uh, their economy isn't isn't that bad um, to be fair so let's see if uh, price continues to uh, appreciate or the exchange rate at least if you are looking for any kind of short trades on the uh, Aussie um, yen and thinking that the, the yen is a bargain at any of these prices then I would probably say the best area would be up at the 9650s in the higher zone before looking at getting short but Typically, what should happen in a risk-off environment, the Japanese yen should strengthen. But um, I think that um, uh, the market is probably a bit more being driven by fundamentals at the moment than risk sentiment. So uh, for me, my bias is still to the upside. And uh, gold, which has been a very surprising one, um, I thought that there would have been probably some some buying on gold. And it probably is buying. doesn't mean that it wasn't buying because prices have gone down. But... Um, gold has not 
been performing and everyone's probably scratching their heads as to why now I do think there is an interesting a very interesting zone um, this area of demand right here and between this uh, where we are at now uh, to down to the 1681s and I do think that um, from a buying perspective and buying gold um, and the accumulation of gold by you know central banks this is this is definitely a bargain if you consider inflation now if inflation starts to you know come back down right then gold should continue to um you know fall away uh, and that would also uh hopefully mean that um uh, risk is more on than off and that would you know uh, would probably drive gold a bit lower right um but if if the dollar I guess starts to um, still continue to strengthen um, this could obviously push prices to the downside but um, let's see it like I said gold should really be somewhere up here if we consider you know the world um, inflation problems um, yeah it's a bit of a very very strange one everyone's kind of scratching their heads on that also as well something a little bit interesting I guess would be JP Morgan gold desk ripped off markets for years jurors told to so the US uh, says three from a uh, bank decided to cheat with spoof trades defense orders defense says orders were genuine uh, didn't manipulate prices this has been going on for years by the way they've been caught not they but other banks have been caught i think i think actually manipulating the silver market and been fined and stuff like that so manipulations do happen um in the market illegal uh, trading and manipulation um, of um, gold and silver markets and precious metals markets um, so maybe that's what's going on who knows but the point being is that um, <clears throat> gold uh, if you believe you're a gold bug I guess this this should be just looked at as a bargain price um, if you're trading this um, then obviously uh, who knows right because you're probably going to be following momentum uh, to the downside and looking for any kind of pullbacks if you are then I would say here is probably your nearest uh, supply zone to look for any kind of trades but I think the uh, I think if uh, the dollar starts to cool off a bit then this is going to be a decent buy um, considering you know the, the fact that gold has been in this auction for um, quite a while so yeah from uh, 2020 so yeah I think this is going to be a very decent buy for anyone who wants to, who wants to buy gold in, in the long term physical gold or even just trade gold anyways guys that's it for this week um, uh, thanks for watching and staying to the end I uh, hope you have a great trading week and uh, take care